Recently, we've seen Epic gaining a lot of interest in competitive trios tournament. Just a few weeks ago, there was a trios cash cup with a $1 million prize pool. Who knows? Maybe we'll even see it in the next World Cup. It seems like finding and playing with a good trio now could be pretty advantageous, considering that it's still in its infancy. Just like from solos to duos, adding one more player into a competitive game drastically changes how the game plays, so adapting to these new changes is crucial. It seems like the skill gap increases as more and more players are added. Needless to say, the final zones are going to be wild. Today, we're going to let you in on some tips and tricks so you can dominate every game you play. And while you're waiting for trios to take over the scene, head over to InstaPro on ProGuys.com to learn from the top 1% of Fortnite players. Well, succeeding at trios really all starts with having two reliable teammates. Obviously, it's good if you play with them a lot, but it's more important that you play well together. Three players, each with a vastly different playstyle, just isn't going to work. If you have one guy who likes to move with the storm and lay low, and two other guys who always rotate early and love to push everyone, that'll just result in arguing and counterproductivity. Let's take a look at the team comp of Booga, Animal, and Aspect. We're going to be referencing this team a lot throughout this video because they work so well not only individually, but as a team. Individually, every one of them is super aggressive. When you mix all three, it's like they're all working in one brain, which cultivates in an undefeatable unit. I mean, can we just talk for one second about Sentinel? These guys are nuts! Seriously, they've been on the come up for a while now, but after signing Booga, it looks like they've really made it. Every push and every build is orchestrated and agreed upon because they would all make the same decisions. Now, that doesn't mean you should just bail on whoever you're playing with right now, but it's important to consider how you play together. That leads us right into our next point. In trios, communication is key. No matter how good your builds, aim, or edits might be, a trio that can coordinate together will always win. In fact, we'll be seeing a lot more high IQ players winning than just some creative warriors because they're just better working as a team. Now, keep watching the video because we don't want you hopping in with your team and just screaming everything just because comms are important. Let us explain. What can you do to improve your team's communication? The most important thing is confidence. While this applies to a lot of parts of the game, it's extremely important in terms of good comms. When you make a call, you need to make sure everyone else in the group agrees and go with it. Time and time again, teams die because they end up making different decisions last second and get separated. Let's say it's endgame and you're trying to decide on where to launch pad. You see an open area where you can box up. At that moment, you should be calling out exactly where you want to land and sound sure of it. Go for it and don't look back, and there's a pretty high chance your teammates will follow. Check out this clip of Booga, Aspect, and Animal. We need to go. We can go, we can go right here. Jeez. Right here, guess so. High ground is super high, we do not yeah, indulge in that. Not, right? Right yeah, yeah, right the middle, 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 middle. Yeah. Yep. Put cones. You see how early they called it out and how they simultaneously agreed and committed to that one spot? It may seem minor, but this kind of stuff adds up and is what makes them work so well together. In your trio, it's a smart idea to establish an in-game leader, or IGL. This is the one who will make the important calls on where to push and rotate, so they must have good game sense. These are some of the qualities you should have to be a good IGL. If you're looking to improve your IQ and maybe become your trio's in-game leader, try checking out our video on how to play like a pro player. So what kind of comms should you be making? Well, the answer is simple. Anything that will help your teammates. You might be thinking, duh, but you'd be surprised. Most people don't know what should and shouldn't be called out. Calling out your mats, when to rotate, damage, and your target's position are all pretty standard calls. Rotate now, take height, drop low. As you can see, everything is short and effective, but communicates what needs to be understood. Don't forget to stay composed and sound sure of yourself. As a leader, the worst thing that can happen is you get frustrated and hopeless, which will just throw off all the momentum your team could have. You don't want them arguing with each other. The only thing that can come from that is just wasted time. Another thing that needs to be agreed upon is a landing spot. Before you start your games, map out where you want to land and what your plan is once you leave. It should be somewhere relatively unpopulated that has a decent amount of mats and loot. Remember, loot and mats can be acquired from killing people, so as long as you live until then, you're good to go. On the off chance that you do see another team, that's a good time to group up and kill them ASAP. In trios, there's no backing out. You need to go for that kill or they'll end up killing you. Something else to keep in mind is positioning. Most teams start pretty spread out and as the game progresses, get closer and closer together. Especially if you're dropping on a big POI, you should decide which side of the place you want to drop on. Nothing is more frustrating and detrimental to the game than getting taken out right in the beginning. Now, mid-game is usually ignored and most players will drift off, but you can't let that happen, especially when you're rotating. Walking in the open is by far the most vulnerable place to get caught off guard. 
During Endgame, all the teammates are pretty much within around 5 meters from each other. That's because they always have each other's backs and are ready to push or support at any time. A good rule of thumb is that you should always be able to see at least one of your teammates, or else you won't be able to give them some assistance during a fight quickly. This tip isn't just helpful on defense, it's also crucial on defense. It's a lot easier to apply pressure to someone when you have two people on them, which is another thing we see pros do so well. I don't know why I'm 400 Here, kill that guy, kill that guy, West, West, West. I mean, it's just too easy. Let's see one more clip. This guy in a fucking car and it's too late. You gotta go, go. this is scared. This someone is scared. Someone leave, someone leave, someone leave. Mine. Dead? Watch nice, the wall. Nice. You see how they even coordinate who's going to spam and who's going to take the wall? That's called good communication. While we're talking about positioning, think about high ground. It's just as important in trios as it is in solos or duos, if not more so. Not only will you use significantly fewer mats, but you'll basically be getting free kills. When you have three people all coordinate a shot on one person, you can pretty much kill them instantly. With high ground, your chances of getting those shots increases exponentially. But the most important thing to remember in this scenario is staying together. Make sure when you're ready to take height that your teammates are as well. If only one of you goes for it, that leaves you or the person you left down below all by themselves. We Did might I... be able to look for height. Yo, yeah, height is not that high. It's not that high. We could definitely take it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we could take it right now. RPG. I did it. I did it. Sure. I'm cranking above. I, I, there's two. There's two. There's two. We could take this so do you want me to go? I can go for it. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Right now, right now. I have it. 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 Really well done. As I said before, the most OP thing in trios is focusing. Wait. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Second most. You have three times the firepower that you would in solos, which makes it nearly impossible to counter. That's why a well-timed attack is so lethal. Epic Whale, 4DR Storm, and KNG Leno did a really excellent job calling out and focusing people in the last trio tournament. Notice their comms in this clip right here. On me, on me, on me. Get me. I'm coming, I'm not on you. Not close, not close. 20? Me? The white soccer, white soccer. Crack, okay. crack, yep. white soccer west. As soon as one of them found vulnerable players, he called it out, and the epic whale came over. Once he got one guy's shield knocked off, he called out white soccer skin crack to let his teammate know it was an easy kill. Then, it's an easy kill. Adding on to this, putting your enemy into a crossfire is also a really efficient way to secure a few kills. The more sides you can put pressure on, the better. Tifu Sway and Clicks did a nice job of this in this clip right here. See how Clicks is on the left and both Tifu and Sway are in front, taking shots and pressuring? That makes it really tough for the teams to handle both of them, which will allow Clicks to come through and pick up the kills while the enemy is preoccupied with them. Just remember to time the push correctly so you or your partners push when they're distracted. Seralth put it really well in his communication guide. There are three Ds for callout, damage, distance, and direction. That's all you need to call out to let someone know which player you want to be focused. 75 blue 200 at those builds east. All the information you need is in this callout. If you want to see some really high quality VODs, I recommend checking out the Trio Cash Cup from Booga Animal and Aspect that we've referenced so many times. There's a lot to learn from them. While all this might seem a bit daunting and tough to pick up on, it really just comes from playing and playing. How do you think Sentinel got so good? They probably have thousands of hours. Most of this video is about communication because that's really all that matters. If you can't communicate, you can't use the extra ability from the other player. Trios is basically duos on steroids, and it has the opportunity to be one of, if not the most competitive game mode in Fortnite in the future. There's just more area for better game sense, better mechanics, and better teams. Epic will need to tweak a few things such as the loot pool, the brute, and so on, but honestly, the future of Fortnite is still looking pretty bright. I mean, it's only up from here, right? Did you find any of these tips useful or do you have any suggestions? Let us know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much guys. See ya.